Hi, my name is Jeff Thompson. I am a professor in the Romney Institute of Public Management, and it's my pleasure today to greet our alumni and friends who may be watching this video. Uh, we're introducing a new series called uh, Principles for Impact. This is an opportunity for faculty to share with you some of their best content. We hope that you enjoy it. Today I have the opportunity to share with you one of my favorite techniques called the Self-Persuasion Intervention. I hope that you find it helpful. Let's start by talking about the Golden Circle, which is a concept introduced by a consultant named Simon Sinek in his uh, great TED Talk. You can see that referenced at the bottom if you want more detail. Uh, the Golden Circle is a concept that describes how leaders communicate with their employees. And if we start on the left there, um, this model uh, uh, argues that the typical leader, the normal leader, will begin by talking about the what. What needs to be done? What are the outcomes we're looking for? Uh, then the normal leader will generally move to the how, which is the methods and techniques for getting the job done. But most typical leaders don't ever get to the center circle, which is the why, the vision, the big picture, for the reasons uh, for the work that we're doing. On the other hand, you have inspiring leaders, great leaders, who actually begin their communications by starting in the why. They lay, a, uh, they lay the groundwork of the vision for the task before they get into the technicalities. Now, this is important because one of the keys to enduring motivation is connecting people with the why. And the technique that we'll talk about today helps us make that connection. Uh, another background element I want to point out is this question, who is your best motivator? Well, research has been very clear on this, and it turns out that your best motivator is you. And in fact, we can predict people's commitment based on self-motivation through this recipe, this commitment recipe. Uh, psychologists have shown that people are far more likely to follow through with a commitment when there are three conditions in place. First of all, they make a public statement about their commitment. Second, they perceive that statement to be voluntary. And third, they perceive it to be irreversible. Let me give you an example of how this works. Say you have a friend who's trying to quit smoking. It's a notoriously difficult thing to do. The best chance that friend has is to stand in front of friends and family and announce that he or she intends to quit smoking. And uh, I might seek for help and support from those around him or her. So what's happened here is the, uh, the individual has been public about their statement. It, they perceive it as voluntary because they made the choice of what they were going to say. And it's also irreversible because they shared it with people who they'll see all the time. So um, how do we use this idea of behavioral commitment through public, voluntary, and irreversible statements as a leader? Well, that leads into the technique that I'd like to share with you today. And this technique is very well researched. Psychologists have developed it to produce uh, attitudinal changes, and the technique is proven to provide very potent and durable attitudinal changes. In fact, it's more effective than any of the direct influence techniques we usually think of, uh, lecturing to people, uh, begging, uh, dangling rewards in front of them. In fact, scholars call it the most effective persuasion technique of all. So now that I've whet your appetite, let's take a look at what this technique actually is and how you do it. It's not rocket science. The self-persuasion technique has only two steps, but each of those steps help us draw upon the, the, the why of the golden circle and also to foster deeper commitment. So number one, identify an employee that you lead um, that you would like to uh, encourage their motivation. Um, ask them to reflect on what public service means to them or what the organization's mission means to them. After you've done that, the second step is to provide an opportunity for that employee to share his or her thoughts publicly. This might be in a department meeting, it could be in a, a retreat, some uh, at least semi-formal gathering of, uh, of employees and colleagues. And what happens here when the individual stands up and shares their experience, they are hearing themselves speak, um, they, are, they are making a public statement 
Um, although, and, and it is voluntary to the extent that they came up with the content themselves. Of course, they're responding to your invitation, but the message is voluntary and it's irreversible because they're sharing it with the people they work with all the time. Now, there are organizations that use this technique with great success. Uh, one is Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, which uses um, individual testimonials uh, regularly to help people grow committed to making a change in their lives. Another you may be familiar with is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, if you are a member of the church, then every month you attend a testimony meeting. This is an opportunity for people to voluntarily stand, stand up and express their story and their commitment, which of course then deepens their commitment. I had a personal experience with this technique that uh, I'll always remember. Um, our university president visited our department for a Q&A session one year and he did exactly this. He asked me to reflect on my experience, what BYU means to me, and then invited me to share those thoughts with my fellow em employees. And I was, uh, I was struck by how emotional I felt doing that. It was, uh, it was a surprise to me how deeply I felt as I talked about my convictions related to BYU. And I can kind of draw a line between uh, before and after that experience in terms of how I feel about BYU. It had a, a measurable impact on my sense of devotion to BYU and my understanding of how important it is for me to be here. So I invite you to take this tool, apply it in your organization. If you're an organization leader, uh, find ways to bring people in and give them a chance to, uh, to engage in self-persuasion. Um, I, I wish you the very best and I uh, hope you have good luck trying out this wonderful tool.